So if you've been playing retro games for any amount of time, you probably know that playing on a CRT is pretty freaking great. The games are originally made to be played on these displays and the way that the games handle themselves on here compared to a lot of modern TVs is just really different in terms of how the colors are and how scan lines change the look of everything and even all the way up to input latency. Now I made a video on this fantastic device called the Retro Tink 5X, which sort of helps cross the gap between LCD and CRT, but I actually have an update for that in the like two months since then, they've put out a ton of new modes, and I'm gonna show you side-by-side -side comparisons of me playing on the CRT and the RetroTINK 5X. So, let's get into it. For anyone wondering about the setup, I have a Sony Trinitron CRT. This is a this is a big boy. And then down below, I have a PlayStation 1 down here that I'm playing off of. This is not a PS1. Here is my beautiful PlayStation 1 controller. And then I have the uh, the Retro Tank. I don't feel like going around the TV and unplugging them, but I'm using RCA cables. These are not the ones. I'm using actual, like, official Sony cables. But, uh, yeah, I'm not using component or RGB or whatever. I mean, not that this could do component anyway, but, but that one could. I could be playing it on a PS2, but I'm not because I like the look of the PS1. Now, the first thing I want to point out is the color profile differences. On the left is my camera. It's on the CRT and it's kind of washing it out. It's not really doing it justice. I, I tried, but unfortunately Spyro is a little blue. I know it's going to be hard to ignore these color differences, but it's just really difficult to color match. And it's like kind of not really the point of this video anyway. The way the colors on my display versus the CRT are just it's just built different, just like there are modern TVs that are different from other modern TVs. I think the way to go is just get the settings that make it look good to you. And what I'm going to be using the side by side comparisons for. Oh, and by the way, this was me kind of trying to color match. I tried doing a mixture of getting the two screens to look similar, but also have the visuals match up close to how it looks on my actual eyes versus in camera and trying to get a middle ground going for that. Now, unfortunately, you won't be able to see it exactly how my eyes see it because you don't have my eyes and you're looking at this through the internet and we don't have the power to send eyeball data yet. So until then, you'll just have to settle for this. But I do have it fairly close, what I could get it right now. But the main thing about this is I think I've captured the scan lines pretty well. I think they'll all line up and fit and be a good point of comparison. So this right here that you're looking at is with a scan line setting on on the RetroTINK 5X Pro. Yeah, this is definitely not what it looks like by default. This is my preferred way to play through this. But I'm not going to tell you which one this is because I'm going to go through all of them and walk you through them and you can decide on your own which one you like. So let's do that. So right now you are looking at no scan lines on the right. This is the baseline image. Right now I'm going to start cycling and we can cross compare. So this is polyphase 25%. You can see in the top right. This goes ahead and it just puts some pretty simple scan lines across the screen. There's no special pattern or anything like that. This is pretty much just some horizontal lines. There is a higher percentage. We can bump that up to polyphase 50%, which is kind of more of the same it's just a little more pronounced, a little in your face, a little darker. And it makes the image darker because of that. Int mod, what is that? That stands for intensity modulation. We got 25% of that going. This is a variation of the polyface scan lines, but this has the width of the beam, which isn't really a beam. I mean, that's kind of how CRTs do it. But that is proportional to brightness, which kind of mimics the CRT. And then we can bump that up to int mod 50%. And at that, it has a similar visual characteristic to an 800 to 900 TVL 
BVM. Now, you're going to have to take Mike Cheese word for that. I don't have one of those to cross compare, but that's what he says he thinks it looks like. So if you like that, well, there you go. And then 75% is more the same, but more intense, which, it, you know, it looks fine. That's not my go to, but it's cool. Now, the next one we have is Slot Mask. So this is also doing some vertical lines, which is used to mimic a CRT's mask. Hence the name Slot Mask. Slot Mask attempts to recreate an arcade CRT look. So, you know, not necessarily what you're gonna be playing PS1 games on, but it's cool to see it in comparison. And then we will move on to Aperture Grill. And Aperture Grill attempts to recreate a consumer CRT, which is definitely what I would play PS1 on. You can see the mask is maybe a little more fine. And you know what? I think it looks pretty fun. I'm not gonna say that anymore. Let's uh, move on. <laughs> so Aperture Grill was so good. They had to make a sequel. We got Aperture Grill Dash 2. And what is that? This is going for more of the PVM kind of look. If you are familiar with Retro Tank, one of the old updates had a PVM mode and that's what this is. It's essentially an air quote, higher resolution of the other one. And now we have the PVM 600 TVL, which attempts to make it look like a PVM 600 TVL. The name's uh, pretty straightforward. This is a finer grill with highlights to mimic a mid-range PVM. And it's definitely a lot more fine. It's, it's very strong, very intense. It honestly kind of hurts my eyes a little bit. The next one is FV310. What exactly is that? This is a more coarse grill with highlights to mimic a consumer CRT, like a Trinitron. And I think it looks pretty good. I'm a really big fan of consumer CRTs. That's definitely my favorite way to go. I mean, I just said the last one kind of hurt my eyes. So you probably could pick up on that. And hey, speaking of, the next option is consumer dash one, which is a different pattern. You can probably immediately tell. This is a coarse, slot mask with no visible scan lines, which would mimic a lower resolution consumer too. And you can see it has this weird, almost dithery, checkerboardy, like hazy, fuzzy kind of look to it. It's a, it is like the soap opera effect for CRTs. It's whenever you get into the clouds, I don't necessarily love it. But other than that, I really like the character it puts into pretty much literally everything else. I don't know why the top right's so weird. I like it a lot, but what about Consumer Dash 2? Consumer Dash 2 is very similar to Dash 1. It has a slightly different pattern and it adds a little bit of that scanline look back into it. Then we have Integer 100%, which is just really heavy. Immediately you can tell our brightness is just getting sucked out of the image. Scan lines are thick. This one also, kind of hurts my eyes. Uh, <laughs> whenever I blink, I could still kind of see the image there. Not my favorite, but you know, I'm glad it's there. Maybe if you tweak with like your brightness or whatever settings on your TV, it would be pretty good. And then we have LCD, which honestly, I think actually looks really good, which is funny because this is not mimicking PS1 at all. This is supposed to be like a Game Boy type thing, but something about it. I don't know if it's just because I grew up with handhelds or what, but there's there's this nice charm to it. Again, it's probably not my first like go to, but I think doing raw pixels versus LCD, like if you didn't want a super heavy scan line look, I really like this. I think this is good. And that was the last mode. We are now on off. We're now on off. The scan lines are off. I don't know why I said it like that. If you have anything specific you want me to go through, please let me know. I'm doing this comparison, obviously, because I want to see it, but people asked for me to do it, so that's why I'm doing it. So hit me with some more suggestions, and I will do it. Now I'm going to show you the settings that I really like and kind of talk about them a little bit. I really want to make sure that I reiterate this, that the point of this video was about scan lines and how to reproduce a look that you want and that could be comparable to a CRT, a lot of CRTs look very different from each other. I hope that these different modes kind of put that into perspective. So depending on what you want to match your picture to, or even if you want to match your picture at all, you know, if you wanted some crazy, awesome, expensive, like PVM, and you can't afford that, 
but you can buy a retro tink and you want to match the look of that, you very well may prefer to do that instead of matching it to your consumer CRT. Like that's 100% a legitimate way to play through games. But I really want to put emphasis that color, how the scan lines are gonna look relative like with the color and the brightness, the contrast, things that are going to be changed by putting these settings on, that is going to be based on your CRT and your TV. I cannot tell you how to configure your TV. I can't tell you how to calibrate it. I don't know what settings you have on your TV. All these things are made so different. So that is 100% not the point of this video. And unfortunately, I can't like, I would have to go to your house and look at it with my eyeballs to configure your color settings and get everything set up right for you. So there's just like not a feasible way for me to do that. You're gonna have to put in some time and figure out what you like. There is no right way to do this. It's just, oh, this looks good. Like you can blow out the colors and you know, have it not be calibrated and be accurate. And you very well may prefer that look and that's totally fine. So I'm gonna tell you about my setup a little bit to finish out this video while I'm playing through. I am playing off of the uh, like video preview of my capture card. So don't expect me to be making any fluid motions. Please just don't make fun of me, okay? I know how to play video games. All right, anyway, <laughs> I really like the Aperture Grill look. This is probably my favorite. It sort of mimics what I grew up with. I also think that using composite cables, having this sort of blurry image, the scan lines come in and they kind of add some kind of look to kind of add a little bit of detail back into it. And I think that it looks really nice. That's my preferred way to go. For a long time, I feel like I kind of jumped into the bandwagon of not doing that that, oh, composite's bad, you need to have sharp pixels, and maybe for 2D, that could be the case. Like, if you want to do that, 100%, go ahead and do that. I have a video on my channel about playing 2D games, and I actually still like using these exact settings on them. Look at Castlevania, Symphony of the Night. For example, there's a lot of detail that you kinda just it blends together like magic. It just, you're like, oh, this is how this was supposed to look. If you played this with sharp pixels, it kind of just looks really blocky and weird. Again, that's just my opinion. I don't think that it's a bad way to play it. I would play it if that's how it was presented to me. If that was an option for me to play and I didn't have the option of playing how I have my settings now, I would still play it. It's just, I prefer this way. And I think that this way is really good. If you want to use this as a reference point, use this as a base, and then tweak to your heart's content, by all means, feel free to do that. I think you will have a great time, just like I had a great time making this video. I hope that you will subscribe. If you have anything that you want me to cover on this, please feel free to leave a comment. I made this because of a comment, and I like to talk, and I have the equipment, so I'll keep making them.